We thought the Cubs were going to go to the Astros and pull Ryan Stenick out of that bullpen after Josh Hader got the big five-year contract. But no, it's Hector Narvis that the Cubs signed. And you're talking about a guy that loves to throw the baseball in relief. We're going to talk about the newest Cub. But first, let me ask you guys to do me a solid like and follow. Give us a thumbs up if you're into the Cubs. And let's get this thing started. Go Cubs! So everybody, I'm Mick Gillespie on assignment, but not too busy to come at you guys with breaking Cubs news. And that news is that the Cubs have gone out and they've added to the bullpen. And people were wondering, like, when were the Cubs going to start making moves to uh, solidify that bullpen? And they go and they get Hector Narvis. This is a guy that they're getting on a one year, nine million dollar contract. But sources say that if he hits 60 appearances, that the option and there's a team option converts to a player option. So you're saying 60 appearances, that is a healthy season. And I got to be honest with you. I absolutely love it when contracts have incentives for the players to do well. And this is something that you lose a lot with guaranteed contracts, but obviously we saw what the Cubs did with Imanaga, Jed Hoyer, Carter Hawkins back again with another incentive late contract and and it's uh, including another pitcher so last year let's talk about narvis with the astros 71 appearances last year six and three record and look at that earn run average of 1.71 couple of saves and 68 in the third innings he's not a closer but he's a guy that you can use in high leverage situations and we're going to look at the bullpen with Narvis tomorrow on our video, right? And we'll see where he slots in. I mean, you know, the guys that are back and the guys that are gone, right? Um, But Narvis was, according to reports, hoping to get maybe a three-year deal. This could turn into a two-year deal. He's 34 years old, pitched with the Phillies, and now he, he pitches with the Cubs, the Astros in between. But 33 and 36 record, love the earned run average of 324. 89 saves uh, with Philadelphia t- 2014 to 21, and then the Astros and now the Cubs. Now, 34 years old, getting up in years. But look, when you're a, a, a high leverage bullpen pitcher and you're on a one year contract, I mean, you got to go out there and again prove yourself. And I think I love that idea, right? So um, you didn't get Josh Hader. I don't think the Cubs were really interested in giving a reliever five years. And I've heard from a lot of people around the game of baseball that would be hesitant to give even the best relievers of all time a contract like that at Josh Hader's age. But you you still got to have some guys to slot in there and come into high leverage situations. So, um, you know, the the crazy thing is we, we were looking at the Astros who signed Hader and he, they're paying a hater a bunch of money. And so you figured that there'd be some other guys in the bullpen that aren't going to make the money that they were going to. I mean, that's how you're going to afford to have Josh Hader. And we figured that it would be Ryan Stenick that would be a guy. And he could still be a guy that the Cubs go out and sign. And I'm thinking that the Cubs will still want to go out and add some more relief to this bullpen before it's all said and done. But 34 years old, a guy who has uh, found a way to get the job done over the year and off uh, over the years and coming off of a season where he had an earned run average under two pitched in some big games with the Astros knows how to win being with Houston and uh, you know, helping them in the postseason and doing what he's done. And, then the thing I mentioned again is that 60 appearances and then he gets to take over the option. So it belongs to him as far as being able to uh, come back or not. Right. So um, $9 million for a reliever this day and age is, is a pretty good chunk of money, but, but this guy has so much upside for this bullpen. And as the Cubs try to fill in those spots, including one left by Michael Fulmer, who's uh, not coming back, Narvis is someone who you feel like, hey, we like this guy. And the way that bullpens work now, another great point about Narvis is he loves to pitch. 
And when your starters are only going to pitch five or six innings, you got to have some guys like him that can come into games and give you appearances and go back to back days and, and, and not really lose a lot and that are prepared for that and that like to do that job. So Narvis, who's made uh, really um, a career out of being a guy that's begging for opportunities to go in there and pitch a rubber arm type guy. The Cubs get him. It was a surprise. The Yankees were after Narvis. There were some other clubs that were linked to him. And it was the Cubs that came out on top. So it was another one of these contracts that you look at and you go, you know what? This You take this to the owner and you're going, hey, look, we're paying him this. We've got this. If he does 60 appearances, then, you know, the option. But that's good because if he gives you 60 appearances, then that means that it's been a great year for him. Uh, you would think anyhow. And then his track record uh, as being one of uh, the really good relievers in baseball in spots, you know, where you can come in, bring him in high leverage situations, get the job done and, um, and and then use him the next day and not worry about him, you know, running out of gas, getting injured, uh, you know, kind of a, a really tough guy. So uh, tomorrow we're going to get into the bullpen and we're going to talk about what the different options are now for the Cubs where they may go next if Ryan Stenick is uh, Ryan Stenick is still an option for them you know what what direction do they go the th- the other thing you like about Narvis is that he has been a closer in the past so you can use him in that spot as well he's got experience there you know Adbert Alzali was in that role last year but was injured at the end of the season so you get a lot of these guys that pitch in the high leverage spots and you put them in the bullpen uh, you remember some of those names from last year, Merriweather and Leiter. And, and, and it was it felt like there was just like a group of guys that pitched when the game was on the line. You want to make that group a lot bigger this year, because if that group's bigger and they're having success, that means success for the entire team and the bullpen. And that's where we are right now. So that happened uh, today. And again, um, on the Cup Baseball channel, have a video for you tomorrow. We'll talk more about it and um, kind of break down maybe how the bullpen looks. Uh, moving forward with some other stuff. But thanks for hanging out with us and uh, make sure that you like and follow. Give us a thumbs up, guys. And again, appreciate you being here. Go Cubs. And uh, this is a, a good one. A surprise, surprise, surprise. That little lady on there. Uh, kind of a, a, a sneaky little move there by the Cubs to, to land a reliever. I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for hanging. Go Cubs.